Hi, we're the Bonham and Khalifa family. And we're thankful for God's permission. <laughs> what you guys that been? I got to that. And we're thankful for God's provision in, in this season. Hi, we're the Hughes family. And we're from Castletown PM. We are thankful for each other. And the gift of new life. In this season. Amen. Amen. Hi, we're the Watterson family from Port Erin. And in this season, we are grateful that we were able to move house the day before the Isle of Man went into lockdown. And we've had awesome weather ever since. Hi! Hi. We're the Shaw, McCann and Hickenup family in Peel. In this season, we are thankful for... Living with church family, these fellas. I am thankful for the quietness that the world is experiencing at the moment, giving me more time with Jesus. Being able to call my friends and family. Being able to get out on this beautiful island. Most of all, we are all thankful for... Jesus! Jesus! <laughs> we are the Sweet family. And we are thankful for guinea pigs. And for God's provision. And for lots and lots of children. Hi, we're the Beji Chowke family from Douglas AM. We are grateful for sustenance and provision in this season. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Word life. Word. Okay. Word life. Welcome to the Living Hope live stream, Sunday 26th of April. It's a great day to be thankful to the Lord. We have so much to be thankful for. And for me personally, today marks my 23rd year of ministry here, leading Living Hope on the Isle of Man. You know, the psalmist said, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Elsewhere he said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Not I was mad or sad or bad, but I was glad. Let's come before God with thankful hearts and gladness today. Let's come before him in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We have so much to be thankful for. Life, health, and strength. And we want to give thanks for Jesus and your great love toward us in sending him to die on the cross for us. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit who empowers us to live for you. And we thank you for your church and the family that you have given to us at this time. And today, Jesus, we want to magnify your name. We want to glorify you in worship. Come and be our chief guest as we gather in this live stream. Amen. You know, the Bible says that God is good. He's good actually all the time. So let's rise to our feet. Let's lift our hands, crank up the volume as loud as you can, and let us worship God in song. Sing of the goodness 
would you purchase us for God? Jesus, you are worthy. Justice and mercy, justice and mercy, justice and mercy me on the cross, justice and mercy, justice and mercy, justice and mercy me. praise. You're worthy of all glory, all power, all blessing, all honor belongs to you. Yes, we thank you that you've been inhabiting our praises today. We thank you that you've been filling not only our hearts, but our homes with your presence. Thank you that as we've been drawing near to you, you have indeed drawn near to us. Amen. Amen. And today we're going to continue in prayer, praying for three aspects today. First of all, our NHS workers. We also want to pray for healing, for those who need a healing touch today. That could be you. And also for those who are feeling the impact of isolation and loneliness at the moment. We want to pray for you today. And as we pray, let me encourage you to open your hands where you are, to receive from God everything that he has for you in our prayer. Yeah. And Katie, Katie Sutherland, one of our deacons, is going to pray for us at the moment. And today's a very special time for us to pray because Katie actually is in the UK. She's having the completion of her cancer treatment and she's actually separated from her uh, husband and her family and from us as a church family. So it's really special to have Katie pray for us today. Over to Katie. Hello, so I'm Katie and I'm married to Jamie and we are deacons in Living Hope, Port St Mary. So here's a picture of our lovely family and um, I'm currently on a little adventure without them at the moment. I'm in Liverpool for about a month, just about to start radiotherapy. So for those who don't know me, I've had surgery and chemo and I'm on the home stretch. This is the last run. Um, I'm quite excited. So thank you so much to those who've prayed. Um, so words of encouragement, gifts, worship songs. Um, I'm so grateful from the bottom of my heart, thank you. So today I've got the privilege of praying into three key areas uh, together. So let's pray for everyone firstly in the NHS. Father, we thank you for what they're doing. We thank you from the cleaners to the consultants, Lord. Uh, and we ask for favour and protection, Lord, for them. We pray for provision as well and for their families, Father God. And we just declare that each one is precious in your sight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Secondly, let's pray for everyone facing treatment or sickness at this time. This is a crazy time to be undergoing treatment. It's crazy. There's no other way of saying it. However, God is greater. And I was reminded um, in Matthew verse, well, chapter 4, verse 23. Um, and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. All kinds. He didn't limit it. So Father, I thank you that you are the great physician, that you are our healer. 
Um, I thank you for the doctors and nurses as well, our medical teams. I thank you that we can call on your name in times of trouble. I thank you there are testimonies today of miracle signs and wonders and we ask for that in Jesus' name. Father God, let's pray for deaf ears to be open and blind eyes to be open, for fever to be gone in Jesus' name, like um, Peter's mother-in-law, Jesus rebuked a fever and it left her. And we rebuke fever and viruses and infection in Jesus' name. I pray for cancers to be gone. And I pray even for hearts to be healed that are broken in Jesus' name. Amen. And lastly, let's just pray for those like myself in isolation, which could be a time of um, feeling lonely or fearful. Um, actually, it's a really, really special time if we allow it to be. So um, I just pray for anyone who's in isolation, feeling a wobble. Um, I pray it's a time of great intimacy with the Father. I pray like it's a radio station. He's always talking to us. Sometimes we're not tuned in. So I pray we tweak that frequency so we can hear him. We can hear his voice. Um, and I pray for a time of worship and rejoicing and celebrating and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. I just want to read Psalm 46 over us. Um, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present, very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. So we're never on our own. He's with us. He's present. Um, and Psalm 23 that we're doing at the moment has been my favourite. It's my rock I've clung to all the way through. Um, yeah. So thank you all so much. I just want to pray. Ask for prayer for me. My friend sent me one of these. Please wear, I have to wear one of these to stop me eating things at the fridge in isolation. Thank you. Love you all. See you soon. God bless. Thank you so much, Katie, for praying for us. And we want to pray for you. Don't we, church family? Let's come before God and let's lift Katie and Jamie and their family. Let's pray for God to move in power, in healing for her this time. Father God, we thank you that you indeed are the healer. We thank you that it is your desire to heal and we speak healing into Katie's body today. And we thank you, Lord God, for family and we speak your blessing over Jamie and over the children as well, that they would know your blessing and your presence. Thank you so much for Katie's powerful testimony and and how she's using this opportunity to glorify your name. Yes, Lord, continue to give her more opportunities to share the good news where she is at this time. And I pray that she wouldn't feel lonely, that you would manifest your presence in every place where she goes. Manifest your presence. Draw near to her, we pray. And bless them. Bless them as the Sutherland family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One of our greatest weapons that God has given us in these spiritual battles is worship. Because when we worship, God inhabits our praises. The atmosphere changes. And so whatever you're going through today, let me encourage you to worship God with us in these songs. And let's believe that as we worship, we will receive our healing, we will receive strength, we will receive encouragement from the Lord that he will manifest his presence. Let's raise a hallelujah in worship today.
I'm gonna say in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive I raise a of my enemies sing a little louder louder than the unbelief sing a little louder my weapon is a melody sing a little louder heaven comes to fight for me sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies sing a little louder Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes, hope will arise Death is defeated, the king is alive And I'm gonna say, in the middle of the storm Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar
today we have some exciting family news let me tell you you want to uh, subscribe for my weekly email you can do that quite easily each week so that you get the latest family news straight to your inbox and i'm going to share the latest family news with you now so this week we start a brand new daily devotional we're going to be looking at psalm one and you can download that now on kindle or you can see it on the living hope app each day and the Living Hope uh, website as well. We've really been blessed by the past seven days studying the 23rd Psalm, but now we're on Psalm 1 for the next seven days, and that is every morning at 8 a.m. on the Living Hope Facebook page. Alpha has started Alpha online on Tuesday evenings and on Thursday lunchtime. It's not too late to join in on that Zoom, so if you're interested, info at Living Hope. I am. If you want to explore matters of faith in Christ, join the Alpha Course right this week. And then I want to share with you about our equips. It's our desire to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And in these challenging days, it's a time to be equipped during lockdown. And so we have some new and exciting equips that are going to be starting on Tuesday night, the 5th of May at 8 p.m. And they're just one hour long. And they're four week equips. So what's the first one? Well, it's a study of the book of Colossians with uh, Ewan McRae, one of our pastors, and he subtitled it A Life Less Ordinary. So you want to get into the word. I'm sure you want to get into the word over these next four weeks in May, then register on Eventbrite for that. The second equip, Adrian and Maddie Porter are going to be leading for us. That runs concurrently with Ewan's one as well. That's Mental Health Wellbeing Equip. That runs for four weeks. I would really encourage you that this will be a blessing. Now, all of us are, are, are challenged in this area. And uh, I'm sure that you'll be blessed by um, listening to Adrian and Maddie, the godly wisdom and the practical wisdom that they will be able to impart during this equip. And again, numbers are limited. You must register via Eventbrite for the details. And again, it's a one hour equip and then there'll be an opportunity for questions in, in, included in that one hour equip. And then lastly, a third equip, actually we're gonna partner with Care for the Family. And during the month of May, uh, they're encouraging as we will encourage couples to have four date nights. And so they have produced great resources called the Marriage Sessions. And you simply subscribe with Care for the Family. You can see the link there on the screen. Just simply subscribe online and weekly they will send you the link to download 
the marriage session so that you as a husband and a wife can, at your own leisure, at a time that best suits you, watch those resources and spend time together. So that's three great equips for the month of uh, May. And then I just want to turn to our offering now. If you're a guest watching, then this is for the Living Hope family. Thank you for joining us and actually your presence with us is your gift to us. But the offerings for the Living Hope family only. And this is when we return our tithes and our offerings to the Lord and the details of our bank account are on screen. You can also give by PayPal as well, paypal at livinghope.im. And there's a QR code there, which will take you to our website, which will give you all the different ways that you can give at this time. Now, many of you will know that we launched our benevolent top-up fund uh, a number of weeks ago, and we're already starting to help some families. And let me just share with you that if due to lack of work or reduced hours, you are in need. You can't put food on the table. We are here to help at this time. And all you simply need to do in confidence is to speak to your life group leader or your pastor, and uh, they will direct you to somebody in the team that's administering the benevolent top-up fund. So don't, don't hold back, please. If you have any financial need at this time, please speak to your life group leader or local congregation pastor, and we we want to help. We want to uh, serve you and help you at this time. Our Benevolent Fund doesn't only help people on the Isle of Man. We go far beyond that. We've been doing that for many years. For instance, at the end of last year, we gave uh, many thousands of pounds to brothers and sisters in Southern Africa, particularly, uh, who are impacted by drought at this moment in time. And so uh, we give to Zambia, uh, first of all, and it's been so good to hear that in Zambia they've had rains. So we gave initially food and then we gave seeds so people could uh, sow in the churches there. And I've already seen footage this week from Zambia and we have had bumper crops. So thank you, Jesus. And thank you for your generosity in helping our brothers and sisters in Zambia. However, the story is very different when it comes to Zimbabwe. Actually, the story is heartbreaking. And I'm going to share with you uh, after a video in a few minutes how you can give to uh, our brothers and sisters there at the moment. But um, yeah, let's just take a, a few minutes now to return our tithes uh, and our offerings. And then I'll share, share with you how to make a special offering to Zimbabwe. But th this video is heartbreaking. It's just come through from Neville, who leads one of our partner churches in Zimbabwe. So let's take time to watch what's happening there at the moment. And as we watch, let's not have compassion fatigue. Let's pray for them. Through 412, we have been supporting partnering churches in Zimbabwe. These churches are situated in the capital city, Harare, which is 588 kilometers due north of the South African border, and in the greater rural area of Masvingo, which is halfway between South Africa and Harare. Over the last 12 months, 412 has provided maize seed and other very basic food needs. Neville pastors the 200 Adult Strong Church in Harare, and Nicholas oversees 18 smaller churches in Masvingo, with 1,350 adults in total. This entire area has been subjected to the harshest drought since 1928, with their livestock also now having perished or been eaten. <laughs> We are restricted from walking and uh, going to work and uh, the situation is hectic as we are just staying in homes and we don't have food uh, to feed uh, the family. So now the situation is hectic because as we are trying to go to our fields, we can't, we are being restricted and uh, the little that we had in our fields, uh, it has been stolen because we don't have access to go there. And now we don't have anything uh, and the situation is hectic. 
and we have got grandchildren that we need to look uh, after. They have said that their challenge isn't COVID-19, but the starvation that is now also taking the lives of the young. So things are very tough. We are starving. There's no food. So we need some help. We are looking for trying for help. Can you help us? We don't have anything to stay. Even if you come into the house, there's nothing to eat. Okay. So the situation is quite hectic here. Uh, they've actually picked up some mealies, uh, which is from other people's field, and uh, to try to feed the family. So it's a, it is, it is, it is a hectic situation which is happening here, uh, because this mealy it's not even from their field, but it is from other people's field. Yes. Uh, which is really tough. Um, and the kid that they are holding, it's not their kid. They've actually adopted this kid uh, from the community. Uh, mom of the, the kid, uh, she's out there in the world. And they are looking after the this baby. kid. These are desperate times. And those pastoring their churches find their experience to be no different. This is a photo of Nicholas's fridge before he received some money from 412 to enable him to buy food. Any support that can be given makes a huge difference and the teams are working hard to get food out into the community. So this is our first lot of Millimu. We've got about 200 bags of Millimu and we've got about 10 packs, big packs of uh, chunks uh, which we're going to uh, pack into small packs and this is 200 bags of Millimu and now we're going out again to go and look for cooking oil as well as uh, uh, sugar at Metro Peach. And we just want to thank you for the great, great support. There we go. That is me. Thank you very much. So we really need to unpack now. Thank you. Please continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Zimbabwe and consider if you are able to give in this time of crisis. Thank you. What's happening in Zimbabwe is heartbreaking. It really is troubling to see that in parts of Southern Africa, literally people have no food. Uh, we did help our brothers and sisters in recent months to provide fo food for them and also for seed to be sown, but they didn't have the rains as our brothers and sisters in Zambia uh, were blessed with. The little crop has come up, but in many instances, as you've seen and heard during lockdown, when they were able to get out of their fields, sadly, other people came and stole the little crop that there was there. Um, some children have been abandoned by parents who, who have nothing and have, uh, have just left them with older people in the village. And so as a church and as uh, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we want to help wherever we can. And the great news is that we can do that with integrity through our 412 partnering churches on the ground. We already have assisted these pastors. We know them personally, and we know that whatever finance that we give, it is being stewarded with excellence. Uh, this week, as a, as a family, we've already returned our tithe, and we have made a, a special offering, and I've, I've uh, marked that for the Benevolent Fund. Uh, and so you can simply give to uh, our, our brothers and sisters in Southern Africa the same way as you would give your tithe and offering, same bank account details, same PayPal details. And of course, uh, we will uh, be giving updates of how the feeding program is going. You know, in the early church, they faced exactly the same problem. We read in the book of Acts and in some of Paul's letters that there was a famine in Jerusalem. And so the saints, uh, the churches in Europe actually helped and were mega generous to brothers and sisters that they had never met and would never meet until they got to heaven. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 to 4, this is what Paul writes about that giving during a time of famine. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed into a wealth of generosity on their part. For they give according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, 
of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. So let me encourage us and exhort us to take part, not to do it under compulsion, but will we all do something? Even the widow's might, Jesus saw, will we do something for our brothers and sisters who need food on the table at this time? And just simply mark it as benevolent funds, and then we will ensure those in the greatest need are fed at this time. So let's give for the relief of the saints across the world, and let's do so with cheerful hearts, and let's do so generously. Bless you as you give. Today we continue in our messy series, Walking in Faith, Not Fear. And in today's message, I really pray that we will build faith and build hope in these challenging days. I don't know whether you noticed a news story just in the last few weeks, but a 64-year-old manager in the defense industry in France, it was his birthday, and his employees thought it would be a great idea to pay for him to have a special trip on a fighter jet in France. Now, he wasn't really interested in, fl in flying. The employees thought it'd be a great idea for a boss. He'll think this is absolutely excellent. So they got all the legal permissions. Uh, he had a little bit of a, a briefing before he got into the co-pilot seat behind the pilot and they go up into the air. Well, everything was going well until the pilot started to pull some high speed maneuvers and barrel rolls. You can just imagine what's happening. And he had never experienced anything like this in his life before. And in the middle of one of these high speed rolls, he panicked and he grabbed hold of the first thing he could grab hold of. And what do you think he grabbed hold of? The ejector lever. And at two and a half thousand feet, he was ejected out of the fighter jet. Oh my goodness, what a story. And it's a true story as well. You know, that's what fear does. When, when fear hits you, you, you panic and you grab hold of the wrong things. And in these days, it's clear that there is fear around, the fear of sickness. The fear of financial problems, the fear of loneliness, the fear of bad news, the fear of anxiety, the fear of being overwhelmed. And, and often when this fear comes upon us, we lay hold and we grab hold of the wrong things. We, we panic and we lay hold of fear and, and anxiety and, and alcohol and, and pills and, and even anger. But the word of God speaks very differently. And here's what Paul says to young Timothy. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. In fact, the psalmist says, I will fear no evil. That's what we need to be declaring as well. I will fear no evil. But Paul has to exhort young Timothy who is also going through fearful times. Timothy, don't shrink back. Don't be timid. Don't have a victim mentality, Timothy. You are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loved you and gave himself for you. You are a victor. And so Paul's encouragement to young Timothy is like you do not have a spirit of fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but what God has given to you, Timothy, wake up, is of power and of love and a sound mind. But Paul actually had to remind Timothy of these three great gifts. And look at what he says in the verse prior to it, in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 6. Therefore, I remind you, come on, Timothy, I need to remind you, to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. Timothy was called to stir up the gifts that God had given him to defeat timidity and cowardice and fear. He needed to stir up what God had put in him. You know, before this lockdown uh, started, the must-have items for every household were what? Um, toilet roll, the rules and pasta. For some reason, those were the two must-have 
items. But can I tell you, I'll let you in the secret and they'll probably sell out after I tell you this. The must have items as this lockdown ends are going to be jump leads. <laughs> jump leads because yesterday I tried to start Annette's car on the driveway. That car has been sitting around doing nothing and it's clear that the battery has lost nearly all of its charge and it would go nowhere. And the same is true of you and me. During lockdown we need to be careful that we don't uh, start running on empty, that we don't get flat, that um, yeah, we, we don't have this attitude of being parked up for the rest of our lives, gathering rest for years to come. You know, fear is contagious. Fear is rampant. And so uh, God's word to us is a, is a reminder word today. Uh, in this message, which I really believe will help us all, I want to remind us of God's great gifts that he has for us during even a lockdown. And here's the first gift, the gift of power to press through. God is giving and has given each follower of Jesus the gift of power to press through, to break through in this lockdown. This is a time of challenge. We have never been here before. There are so many barriers around us, but God is giving us the gift of power to break through. Did you know that on that very first Easter, quite quickly after it, that actually the disciples were on lockdown? They were in that upper room. The doors were closed. They were in lockdown because of fear even of their fellow countrymen. They were practicing social distancing. And after the ascension, they were waiting for the day of Pentecost. And Jesus had told them to wait there because they were going to receive what? Acts 1 and verse 8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And suddenly the day of Pentecost arrived. And when they received that power, there was a total transformation in the lives of each of the disciples. Where once there had been fear and even cowardice, there was now a new holy boldness. In fact, Luke records later in the book of Acts that people said of them that these guys were turning the world upside down. That was the degree of power to which God was, was giving them. These are challenging days. And in many instances, they are dark days. And for many of us, we need a breakthrough. Well, here's the great news. God is giving and has given us the gift of power to break through. He's giving us his own very strength. That's why Paul could say, even from prison, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And let me tell you, dear friend, we can echo that declaration today because of the gift of God's power to every follower of Jesus. We can press through this. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So where is this power? Is it in the heavens? Where is this power? Is it somewhere out there? I remember growing up and hearing the song by Nancy Griffiths and uh, Cliff Richard and Bette Midler from a distance. You know, God is watching us from a distance. No, he's not. He's Emmanuel. He is with us, and on the day of Pentecost, he came by his Spirit and rested and remained upon every single follower of Jesus since that great event. God fills his followers with his power, and that power is actually within us. Look at how great that power is. Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Paul says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think, according to his power that's at work in us. Where is this power of God that can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or, or, or think? 
This power is in you and me if we are followers of Jesus. But the key thing that Paul's saying to young Timothy is, Timothy, you have it. <laughs> Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir up that power that's within you. Jude, the half-brother of Jesus, says in his little letter, uh, but you, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith. And he says about praying in the Holy Spirit. You see, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, when you use that gift of tongues that, that God has given you, things get moving in your life. You start to build up a, a work of God in your life. Don't hide the gifts that were, are within you. Stir them up. And when you pray in the Spirit, you move from idol to action. Okay, so stir it up. Stir up that power. Annette's car has sat idle in our driveway for almost four to six weeks. I turned the key. I turned the ignition. Nothing was happened. I needed to put a little bit of a shoulder to the car, right? I needed to release the handbrake. I needed to get it moving a little bit. And then I pointed it in the direction of the downhill driveway. And as I started to go downhill, and I, I was using my strength at that time. I didn't have much strength to get her car moving. But a little push. I just needed to give it a little push to get it moving. I turned the ignition on. I pushed the clutch in. I, I uh, put it in the second gear. And then when I thought I just got it moving a little bit, I released the clutch. And then suddenly everything kicked in. Everything kicked in. The power kicked in. And that's, that's a kind of picture of what we need to do. All of this power is within us. We have everything we need, Peter says, for, for life and godliness. It's already within us. But when we've remained idle for a while, we need to actually cooperate with God. We need to partner with God. We need to uh, start praying in tongues. We need to start worshiping. We need to start doing. And as we do, as we draw near to God, boom, suddenly the power kicks in. Okay? Stir it up. Stir it up. Paul says in Ephesians 5, 18, don't get drunk with wine. That will lead to all sorts of sinful behavior. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. You know, I have many happy memories of my dad's caravan up in the north coast of Northern Ireland, a place called Benoan. Great beaches, wonderful sea up there. And it was a wonderful big static caravan, and it had a little gas boiler. And all the time, this little pilot light would flicker. It would just flicker. But then when you wanted a shower and you opened up the valve and you drew through the water, you had to do something. Suddenly it went from a flicker to a whoosh and the whole caravan shook as it ignited the gas. And that's kind of a picture of what we need to do. We need to open up the valves. We need to draw through the power of God into our lives. So that's what Paul says. Be filled with the Spirit. We may be little like at home under lockdown. We may be little like a little pilot light at the moment. But you know what? We need to open up. We need to stir it up for the presence of God in our lives at this time. And there are three things I always say about this verse. First of all, this be filled with the Spirit. It's written in the present continuous tense. Okay, every moment of every day, we need to stir it up all the time. We need to be continually, God, would you fill me with your Spirit? We need to start praying in the Spirit all the time, every moment of each day. It's, a, it's written in the present continuous tense. Secondly, it's written in the passive voice. Literally, that means we need to cooperate. We need to position ourselves. Let yourselves be filled with the Spirit. Don't sit back with your arms crossed. God, if you want to fill me with your Spirit today, you can fill me with your Spirit, but I'm not going to partner with you. It's, it's all over to you. It's a sovereign work of God. No, it's not. No, we need to position ourselves. Jesus said in Luke 11, ask the Father to fill you. Come on, Lord, would you fill me with your Spirit? Uh, would you, I'm thirsty for your presence today. Would you fill me with your Holy Spirit? And then thirdly, it's actually an imperative. It's not only written in the present continuous tense. It's not only in the passive voice, but this is an imperative. It's a command. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. The only way that we can live the Christian life is a life that's dominated by the Holy Spirit. Dominated by the Holy Spirit. 
This is a command. This is not an optional extra for the wacky Christians or the more dedicated folks. This is for all of us. Holy Spirit, we are led. Sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. And I want to pray for us in a moment because often our lives are like the sponge for my car. My car hasn't been washed in a long time. And that sponge is in the garage and it's become crusty and hardened. If I was to put that sponge in a bucket of water at the moment, it wouldn't actually soak much in. And often that's like our lives. So we need to open up our lives and we need to immerse our lives in the presence of God and get past that crustiness and the breakthrough with God. It's a partnership with God. So what I'm going to do now is, is pray that God would fill you with his spirit, even as you watch today. And so will you position yourselves? Will you even open your hands today? Yeah, position yourselves. You know, don't kind of lie there in your PJs with a cup of coffee, you know, and slouch. Yeah, God, yeah, do whatever you want to do. No, position, come on. Why don't you even just stand as I'm speaking Right now, and position yourself. Yeah, and God, I'm. I need you. I'm hungry, and I'm thirsty for your presence. I need a fresh touch and a fresh encounter. Holy Spirit, I welcome you. For everybody who hears and watches this message right now in your homes as you travel, Holy Spirit, would you come? Holy Spirit, we thank you, Jesus. You said when we ask, we will receive, and we're asking now. And you're a good father, God. Would you pour out your spirit on dry and thirsty hearts? Would you overwhelm us? We want to give more of our lives to you. Would you come, Holy Spirit? We stir ourselves up. We move from idle mode, from being parked up, to position ourselves for you to move today. Come, Holy Spirit. Overwhelm us. Flood us with your presence. Yeah, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I mean, I, I, even as I'm preaching this, I'm sensing God's power on me. Ask, seek, knock. He's a good father. He'll give the Holy Spirit. He won't give you anything wacky. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. Power to break through in these days. Not your own strength, but, but as Paul reminded young Timothy, church, you need to stir it up. You're going to need to stir up. Don't, don't forget that you've everything you need for life and godliness, but stir it up now. Come on, stir it up. And you know what? He's a second great gift that he's deposited within us. He's deposited within us love for the world's deepest needs. What the world needs now. Remember that song, that advert? People as old as me is love, sweet love. Yeah. There's brokenness all around us. And what our world, what we each desperately need is the love of God. Let me tell you a story about twin girls. In 1995, twins Brielle and Kiri uh, Jackson spent their first few weeks in, in separate incub incubators. They were fighting for their very lives. And Brielle's breathing suddenly became shallow and her heart rate dropped drastically. And the practice uh, in those days was actually to keep twins separate because it was the fear of infection going from one twin to the next. But miraculously, it must have been uh, something that God dropped into this nurse's mind. But miraculously, a quick thinking nurse decided to put the two in the same incubator. Kiri immediately reached over her arm and put her arm around her sister. And do you know what happened? Immediately, Brielle's heart stabilized and her temperature returned to normal. Isn't that absolutely amazing? That love, love changes everything. And that is a prophetic picture of what God wants to do in your life, in my life. We have been made to be loved and to Give love to others. And here's what Paul says in Romans 5 and verse 5. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. 
And in this lockdown season, God wants to remind us and to fill us afresh with his gift of love. That if you're a follower of Jesus, his love has already been poured into your heart. What shape is God's love? Have you ever thought about that? What shape is the love of God? That's a serious question. And look what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 18. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how high or how wide and how long and high and deep his love is. What shape is that? (laughs) High? Deep? wide. Isn't that the shape of a cross? God's greatest demonstration towards every single man and woman and every single boy and girl, his greatest demonstration of love is sending Jesus to die on the cross for your sins and my sins. That's what the Bible says. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and on the third day he rose again. And today God wants every single person in our world to experience and encounter his love personally. He wants the cross, the love of Christ on the cross to reach into every single heart today, bringing forgiveness, uh, bringing freedom and restoring us in our relationship with the Father. Love, the shape of a cross. I love what the psalmist says about God's loving thoughts towards us. Psalm 139. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I awake, you are still with me. I wonder how many grains of sand there are in the world. A lot of beaches in the Isle of Man. I think that might be a, a little bit difficult to count, but maybe if we just started simply, how many grains of sand would there be in a cubic foot of sand? You know what the answer is? One billion. That's just one cubic foot of sand. Of sand. And yet the psalmist says that God's loving thoughts towards us towards him I number the grains of sand on the, the seashore that was the psalmist experience of the loving thoughts of God he was overwhelmed by the love of God your thoughts towards me are without number of God John puts it this way behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. God loves you and God loves me. And he sent Jesus to die for you and for me. His loving thoughts and loving words actually became action. The word became flesh. That's what the Bible says. You see, God's love towards you isn't just loving words. The word became flesh dwelt amongst us and went to the cross to die for you and for me. And today he wants us to embrace and encounter his great love for us during lockdown. Will you do that? Will you open up your life today and in this lockdown, you know, encounter the love of God? If you already are a follower of Jesus, remind yourself, stir it up of the great love that God has towards you. Remind yourself that his loving thoughts towards you are without number. Remind yourself that the word became flesh and died for you. We see Christians need the gospel every day. But then if you don't yet know Jesus as your savior, will you receive him today? Will you encounter him and say, Lord, thank you that you died on the cross for me. Thank you that you love me. And I receive your love and I commit to following you today. That's a gift during lockdown that God has for you. 
And with all gifts, they're not for that unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. God doesn't want to keep this gift to ourselves. John says that we love because he first loved us. You know, in Israel, there are many lakes, but there are two great lakes. There's the Sea of Galilee, which is teeming with fish and, and, and life. It, it, it has abundance. And then there's the Dead Sea, the lowest part on planet Earth, which is literally caustic. What's the difference between the two? Well, why is one caustic and one teeming with life? Well, the Sea of Galilee has an input and an output. It, it receives and it gives. But unfortunately, the Dead Sea just has an input and, and all it does it is actually it gets caustic. You, you couldn't even drink. Nothing lives in it. And so that, that's how God wants us to live, like the Sea of Galilee, full of life because yet we're receiving and we're giving and sharing that love with others. Paul, an apostle, said this. Luke records in Acts 20, 24. My life's worth nothing unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news of the love of God, about the wonderful grace of God. Use this time during lockdown to receive God's love. You know, as a follower of Jesus, remind yourself of the gospel. You know, as, as Paul says uh, to young Timothy, you haven't got a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. Remind yourself of all the loving thoughts that God has towards you. Let that love flood your heart. Remind yourself of what Jesus did for you on the cross. But more than that, it's our, it's our joy to tell others the good news. That's why I'm sharing this today. Christ loves you. He gave himself for you. Will you not only encounter him, but will you engage him today and receive his love and follow him as a new person? Yes. Why did you do that today? We'd, we'd love to give you a starter pack. You know, as, as you do that today, you can text us on 493-500 or uh, email info at livinghope. I am. And as you make that decision to follow Jesus and receive his love, let's help you get connected. And, and church and everybody, let's share your story. You know, um, there are opportunities at this moment in time to share your story with your friends through a WhatsApp message. Uh, record a little testimony on your Facebook wall and, and share in, in three minutes the love that Jesus has poured on you and share that love with, it, with others. God has given you not only power, but love. Love that isn't to be kept to yourself. Love that's to be shared with others. And, and lastly, here's the third gift I want to remind you of. God actually has given you a sound mind. God has given you a sound mind to keep me at peace. You know, with all the social media and news stories and speculation, uncertainty uh, at the time, the mind is a battlefield. It really is challenging to try to keep a sound mind. Uh, I was watching one of the news reports this week and the Isle of Man chief constable was on it uh, on the 22nd of April. And he said that during lockdown, they have seen a 40% uh, increase of people calling the police because of mental health challenges. And even more worryingly, he said that during lockdown, they've seen a 145% increase in domestic incidents. My goodness. There are battles going on in the mind at the moment. These are tough times. But remind, let's, let's be reminded of the promise of God's word. Isaiah 26 and verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stead on you, because he trusts in you. That's the key to having a sound mind. The secret to having a sound mind is where you have your focus and your trust. And that's what Paul is reminding young Timothy in his troubled times. You know, you have a you have love and power, and you have a Signed mind. Now, if you're stuck watching Sky News all day and social media and, and speculation, you're going to have a roller coaster happening in your mind. Like that, like that 64 year old man on that jet fighter, you're going to be pulling the wrong levers. You're going to be in, in trouble if that's where your mind is at the moment. It's going to be scary, not sound. That's why Paul says in Philippians chapter 8, 
Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is anything excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Do you understand that today? Our minds are battlefields. There's a war going on for our minds. It is the battlefield of the mind. This is where the enemy attacks. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart or in his mind, so is he. What's going on in there will determine what's going on out here. That's why our focus needs to be on the Lord. Our focus needs to be on God's word and prayer with God's people. There is power in praise. God has given us a sound mind, but we need to partner with God. Take every thought captive and focus on God and the right things. Let me tell you a story, a funny story. A story about two farmers, a positive farmer and a negative farmer. And when the rain fell on the land, the positive farmer would say, thank you, Lord, for watering the crops. <laughs> thank you so much. The negative farmer would say, yeah, Lord, uh, but if this rain keeps coming, the we're going to have our roots are going to be rotting away and we're never going to have a farm uh, a harvest this year. The sun came out and the positive farmer would say, thank you, Lord, for the sunshine. Our crops are getting the vitamins and the minerals they need. We're going to have a great harvest this year. The negative farmer, on the other hand, would say, yeah, but if this keeps going on, it's going to scorch those plants. We're never going to make a living. Well, one day they decided to go hunting and the positive farmer brought along his new gun dog and they got into their little boat and they go out onto the lake and they begin to shoot ducks. The positive farmer turns to the, his friend, the negative farmer, and says, watch what my new dog can do. <clears throat> and the new dog jumps out of the boat, runs on top of the water, finds a duck on top of the water, runs back the whole way, and perfectly sets the duck down on the boat. The positive farmer is beaming ear to ear, and he turns to his friend and says, what do you think? The negative farmer shakes his head in disgust and says, just what I thought, stupid dog can't even swim. You know, many of us have lived their lives like that negative farmer. Many of us have lived for too long, like a, like a, a needle stuck on the record. Some people are saying, what's a record, young people? But you now know what LPs are coming back in again. But some of us have lived our lives that got stuck in a groove. Stuck in a groove of negativity, stuck in a groove of worry, stuck in a groove of anxiety, of depression, of fault finding, of the glass always being half empty. Where's your mind focused? Peter did the miraculous. He walked in the water. That was until he looked at the wind and the waves instead of focusing on Jesus. God has given us a sound mind. We need to put our focus on the Lord. We need to put our focus on those things which are excellent and praiseworthy and true. We need to change our focus, maximize the word, maximize the prayer, maximize life-giving relationship, maximize praise, maximize focusing on the promises of God. The first disciples 2,000 years ago were on lockdown like you and me. They were behind closed doors. It was a time of fear. But they discovered during that time of lockdown that God was going to put his power within them. He was giving them love. That God would give them a sound mind. And like you and me today, it just needs stirred up. We already have everything we need for life and godliness. But if you're a follower of Jesus, we can't sit idle. We need to stir it up. Elsewhere, Paul says to young Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.14, Do not neglect the spiritual gift that you have received. That's the word for us listening and watching today. Don't neglect 
what God has already put within you, power, love, and a sound mind. God has made such a rich deposit within us. Don't go into idle mode during lockdown. Don't park up. Don't neglect what is there, but stir it up. Exercise it. Get it moving. Get going, right? Until the feelings come. Move in faith. Keep going. Keep going. God has not given us a spirit of fear. We do not have a victim mentality. We are victors. He has given us one of love, one of power, and a sound mind. You know, I love how the psalmist described those who are generous with the things of God. And you know what? Today, God will make us just like these saints of old if we will stir up these things within us. Psalm 112, verses 6 through 8. Listen to this carefully. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. They are confident and fearless and can face their foes triumphantly. What a word to us today. God wants that to be our testimony. You have not received the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I'm reminding you today, stir these things up that God has put within you. It may be you're watching today and you don't actually know Jesus and you're thinking, Jonathan, I don't want to be paralyzed anymore. I don't want to be a slave to fear and living in fear. I realize I don't have a relationship with God. I don't want to be separated from God. I want to start following Jesus. Maybe that's what you're thinking. I want to make him Lord. I do believe he died for me on the cross and he rose again on the third day. I do want to live a holy life, a different life. Well, you know what? Today I'm going to pray for our church family. And if, if you want to respond today to this message, if you'll say, you know, include me in your in your prayer, Jonathan. I'll include you in my prayer today. If you want to have this different life as a follower of Jesus, I will include you in my prayer today. And as I include you in my prayer today, I want you to echo this prayer in your heart, or maybe you even will speak it out where you're watching this message today. And then what I want you to do is immediately after the prayer, text us on 493-500 or email us uh, on info at livinghope.im and tell us that you have made a decision to start walking with Jesus today. And we want to give you a starter pack of a, of a Bible and some resources. We'll get it in the post very quickly. Or, or if you're on the Isle of Man, drop it off on, at your door uh, very quickly. We might even get you connected in Alpha Online if you haven't connected that way yet. But if you're saying, yeah, I, I want to live this different life. I want to make Jesus Lord. I want to live for him. I don't want to live with a spirit of fear any longer. I, I need his power. I need his love demonstrated on the cross in my life. And I need a sound mind. I'll include you in this prayer. And let's echo it in our hearts today. So shall we pray together as I pray for the church family? I'll include you if you're making that start, that first step towards Jesus today. Let's pray, church. Father God, we thank you and we remind ourselves of the great gifts that you have for us during lockdown. I thank you that we don't have a spirit of fear. I thank you that we can declare with the psalmist, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil for you are with me. And I thank you for the gifts that you have for us. And we remind ourselves today, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gift of love. Thank you, Jesus, we're not abandoned. Father God, that you love us, that your thoughts about us are innumerable. And I thank you that you're giving us sound minds. 
thank you. And Father, you know those who are watching today that want a new life and are starting a walk with you, Lord Jesus, today. And, and so I want to include you in this prayer. Father, for all those who are starting this walk with Jesus today, I pray your blessing on them today as they recognize that there are sinners before you, as they confess their sin. Thank you that you forgive them because of what Jesus has done. Thank you you're cleansing them. Thank you even now, Holy Spirit, you're coming into their lives. Thank you that you're blessing them. You're giving them new desires and a new way to walk. Protect them, watch over them. Fill them with your power. Fill them with your love. And I thank you now that you're giving them the ability to take every thought and have to. Thank you now they're part of the family of God and we celebrate them today. You are included in this prayer. Receive Christ where you are today. And thank you, Jesus, the promise of your word that all who are burdened can come to you and you will give them rest. You will never turn anyone away. Thank you even for the prodigals coming home today that you stand, Father God, with open arms to welcome them today, to give them a new identity, to bless them. And we celebrate with you, Father God, lives that are coming into your kingdom today in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. And you know, even in these troubled times, there's such blessing that God has for us. We're going to sing that song, The Blessing. It's a great song. Aaron in Numbers chapter 6 pronounced that blessing over God's people, his Hebrew people in the wilderness, even before they went into the promised land. And there's a blessing today for you. And there's a blessing for your children and your family. So let's sing it wholeheartedly today. And uh, bless God and bless yourself and bless everyone else in this song.
His favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children. And the children, may His presence go before you, and behind you, and beside you, all around you, and within you. He is with you, He is with you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, and your going, in your weeping, and rejoicing. He is for you, He is for you. of your mighty power at work within us that we are able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask, dream, or imagine. Yes. Thank you that this week will be different because we are walking in the blessing of Almighty God. and We bless you and we thank you for such great love for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, let me just remind you, if you wanted to be included in that prayer and you were included, then text us, email us for the starter pack. That will be great. This could be a Bible and some resources to help you in your walk with Jesus. Don't forget that our daily Devo starts again on Monday morning, uh, every day, 8 a.m. That's on Psalm 1 now as we move into a new seven days. We've got life groups on Wednesday nights. If you're not connected, please Email us, we'll connect you to a life group on Zoom. And also Alpha courses are on Tuesday evenings and on Thursday lunchtime. Well, that's goodbye for now from me. We're going to continue worshipping with the McRae family. And if you're watching this live in about 10 minutes, I'll go into my personal Facebook wall. We'll hang out together and hear what God has said to you today. Bless you.